All right, so another video here on how we proceed with our parts. If you watched the previous ones, you've seen how we've taken this raw piece of material, how we picked it up, how we faced it off and we machined around and showed a couple of tricks to how you can do that and what to kind of like consider in regards to cutters and how you're gonna pick it up and what tools you're gonna to use for that. We have applied some tool pads to this, milling tool pads to this. We have roughed out a pocket. We've also finished the pocket. Now we're actually ready to start drilling uh, some different holes uh, into that. So what we're going to do now is we're going to add some drilling operations. So that's sitting up here, right? That's the next step. And again, the cool thing about Fusion 360 Cam is that it's the same dialog boxes all the time. So you already know that the first thing we're going to do is select our tool. So let's go in and select the tool. Now we cannot use any of those tools we already used. We're actually going to go in and use some drilling tools. Uh, but one of the things we normally do, especially if we're drilling in steel, is we don't just use a standard drill to drill right away. Um, most standard drills have a 180 degree drill tip on them. And what that will do is it will actually wander around when it hits a flat surface. So we pre-drill with something we call a spot drill. Okay. And it, it, normally it's a 90 degree spot drill. They can look a little bit different. Um, and you can see we get a little bit of preview. They're normally like a little stoppy drill, it looks like. Carbide is, is, is pretty common for those. You can also use these to chamfer around your part up on top. That's, they're really good at that too. So we're going to select a spot drill first. And uh, so we selected that. Now again, when it comes to cooling and it comes to your feet and speeds, definitely go ahead and use the tool manufacturer's recommendations, okay? I said it in, the, in the, one of the first videos, make sure you're good friends with the tool manufacturers when it comes to that. Um, now, when we're going to select our geometry, we can just select the faces of all the holes that we're gonna machine. Um, there is a select same hole in here, so if I check this one and I just select this face here, you will actually see that it picks up all uh, same sizes. Now, I also want that last hole in here, so I'm just going to select that face too, uh, though that is not the same diameter as the other ones. But now you will see that it actually picked up all the different ones. So we selected that. Now, the next tab is our height. How deep do we want to drill? Remember, we are spotting right now. We just want a little uh, drilling right, leave a mark so when the normal 118 degree drill comes down, it don't swoop around but get caught by that little ding. So I'm going to go over to my heights tab and uh, you'll see that it's set to the bottom of the hole, what of course means through the hole solid, we don't want that. So what I'm going to do is, I'm actually just going to select the model top, could also be the stock top at this point, and I'm just going to put in minus, and I'm going to put in one millimeter here. I'm just going to drill down one millimeter. And again, remember that you can verify this at uh, through the, the simulation. Uh, and also, when you get to this point, maybe out on the machine, you maybe want to be there and just you know stand there with your finger on the emergency button, make sure you got it right. Um, now, you can actually simulate just a couple of operations in here. If I select on the facing operation and hold down control, and select the drilling operation. I'm only selecting those two. So when I go to simulate this, you will actually see that uh, we're only gonna do those two and it will give us a quick preview because I don't really care about the pocket and, and the other things. I'm, I'm good with that right now. So you will see that it's gonna face off and then we will see we get that little uh, dig with the spot drill that will gear down um, our drill. We'll, we'll make sure that our drill uh, drills all the way through. So that's that. We normally have that little pre-drill operation in there. It's normally a good thing. And uh, then we are ready to start drilling uh, the holes. Now, a couple of things I want to point out is that actually our holes are different sizes, right? These four holes are one size, and then we have this uh, tapped hole here. It's actually a tapped hole in here. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm not quite sure what size these are. Don't forget that up here we actually have a little measure tool. So I can select that, and if I just select the edge, you will see over here that it actually shows us the diameter is, uh, well, this block was, was modeled up in metro, uh, in English. Uh, I'm just gonna select a 10 millimeter drill, right? So uh, to drill that, I'm gonna go in and say drilling again. And now I'm gonna go over and hit select tool. I'm not gonna select the 90 degree spot drill. I'm just gonna select a standard drill that we can go in here. You can actually filter 
through in here you can hit the type and you get kind of like everything you have in your tool library uh, in here and you can of course also create your own um, I'm going to select the 10 millimeter drill sitting here in a drill chuck and uh, again feeds and speeds your, your tool manufacturer and now I'm just going to select same diameter I'm just going to select that hole there and, and leave that other hole out right and when I go to my my height here I can actually select drill through the bottom. What this means is I can actually add, you know, maybe a millimeter, and that means that when the drills through the stock, it's gonna continue, it's gonna calculate the drill point, the angle, and then it's gonna go a little bit past it by one millimeter. I want that here. Now, of course, when you do this, make sure you're not drilling into your parallels. That's up to you to check, right? Again, another reason that being inside of an assembly like this, you could check that that it comes out here but for right now we're programming everything just in in here so now i drill those operations the next thing i have to do is this hole here and this is actually a six m6 that's going to go in here so my tap drill is a five millimeter so i'm going to go in and select that tool so let's go in here to our tutorial in here find a a drill i'm just going to hit type here we have the five millimeter drill there select that for the geometry, what is always the second tab, I'm going to select that face there. Now, when I go into my height, uh, I might want to control, you know, the hole of the bottom. This one actually has a drill point uh, in there. It's not flat at the bottom. So you, depending on how accurate you need to be, you can actually go in and control that. So I could actually go in and say selection and just say that I want to, select to that edge and then add the drill tip to it if I want to without anything and now I'm sure that I'm going to have a straight hole down to to that edge okay so there we got that drill hole there the last thing I want to talk a little bit about is uh, drill options so what you see in here for our two operations in here is we have a rabbit out and a rabbit out for these two many times when we're drilling deep uh, normally when you're drilling more than two times the diameter, you actually want to what we call pack or retract a little bit. So let me go back into my, my four holes here, and I'm going to go in and edit those. Be aware of that you have these options in here on the passes tab. How do you want to be able to drill in and out of this hole? So, and, and this can also be uh, your post maybe have to support some of this, um, but normal uh, have something like, Drilling rapid uh, out, and it tells you right here, pretty much just drills all the way down and then it goes out. Where if you're using something like uh, chip breaking, then it might just uh, peg in and out. So it goes a certain amount down and then it comes up again. You can look into all that uh, yourself, those different options in there. The next thing I maybe want to do to this part here, now I drill these holes, is that I want to tap this hole. Okay, and that's kind of like just the same as we just drilled it. So we can go into drilling. And this time, of course, I'm going to select a tab, not a drill. So I'm going to go into our library and I'm just going to hit the type here. And I'm going to go down and select the six millimeter tab. And then when I go over to my passes tab, I'm going to make sure that I say that this is tapping. And you can choose tapping, depends on your machine, how it's set up. Um, but you know, if, however you want to tap this part, make sure you get this in uh, here, so it's not a drilling operation. Whoops, I didn't select any face on the geometry. Uh, make sure that you you change this to a tapping, of course, because if it tries to drill with a tap, it's it's never gonna work. The last thing we have to do in this part here is we actually have to machine these counter bars that was in this part here. Now I waited with those till after I had drilled the holes, right? I had removed the stock out of the center, so I didn't have to worry about that whole thing about heel linking and plunging this thing out. So that's a little tip that that's the last thing I'm gonna do for these counter bars in this operation. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go into my 2D operation and there is actually a circular option in here that works really well for this. I'm gonna select that. I'm gonna leave it, you'll see that it already looked for my 10 millimeter flat and I'm gonna leave that. And then for the geometry, I'm just going to select those four holes again, okay? And now it have put those tool paths in there to do those, all right? That's really the first operation uh, to machine this part. 
we can now go ahead here and we can simulate look at the simulation through this part so again you know we faced it off we machined the outside we roughed out the pocket we finished the pocket we spotted with a spot drill and then we drilled all the different holes um, and then we came we tapped and then we came in again in the end and um, and, and and did the, the circular circular holes there so um, that's kind of like the stabs you normally will go through to be able to machine uh, this first operation. And now we are actually ready to go and, and machine the, uh, the other side, right? We're gonna have to flip it, flip it over. We still have two setups. We're gonna have to flip it over and then we're gonna have to machine the side of that. So let's, let's do that. All right, so we machined uh, this first operation and we're now ready to, we actually have to flip it over because we have some remaining stock on the back and uh, we couldn't machine all the way down to the bottom because we had uh, the vise in the way, right? If we go back and look at our part here, it's sitting in a vise like this. So we actually had just have to flip it over and machine the other side. Now, to do that, I would normally not model it into assembly to show that because it's pretty straightforward especially if you followed the other videos you kind of like already feel pretty comfortable with that what i will do is i will flip the part around just on my graphic screen here right so it's kind of like resembling how it's going to be out at the machine and then i would actually create another setup right because our first setup was down in that corner over here and now i'm going to add another setup so i click on that and we get our 3D gnomon again, just like we did in the first uh, video. So I'm gonna just follow the same steps for the second operation. So I'm just gonna go over here and say, I'm gonna select my Z axis and I'm gonna select uh, um, the, the face here to put the C direction in the right direction. Now, how is this part gonna sitting in the vise and where, uh, where are we gonna pick this part up? That might be um, a little bit of a interesting question. So what I would do was I would leave this pocket that we haven't machined yet sticking out the same way as we did in the first operation. But I would not pick up this top corner. Remember, we have already machined around the bottom side. So what I would do is I would pick the bottom edge as my pickup corner down here on the already finished scenario. Okay, so what I will do is I will go over and instead of select a uh, stock box point, I will actually select this point down here. And I will have to flip that direction around on the X axis. So I'm just gonna flip the X axis around, whoops, like that, and then I'll select that point over there. That's how I would pick up this part. So I would leave this pocket being still on the on the uh, loose end, and then I will pick up that corner. Now that corner could be really hard to pick up out of the machine. So you could cheat a little bit. Um, one of the things that I would do was I would maybe put up a stop. So I have like a stop on my vise that I'm gonna push this part up against. And then I might move something like this part here. It's called a one, two, three block. It's just literally a block. You can buy it, you can make it your own. It's hardened and it, it's square. So it's control that is all square around. So what I would do was I would put a stop on my vise and then I would put this one in, slide it up against the stop, against the solid jaw, and I would pick that up, okay? And now I know that when I put my part in, because the, the raw material is gonna kinda like be sticking up, it's gonna be hard to get to that corner. That's kinda like how I would get around that. There's probably different tricks in the trade. That's how I would use one of these one, two, three blocks. Again, you can buy these uh, fairly cheap. They don't have to be expensive uh, out there. So this is where my, my zero zero is gonna come from. So if we go back to the screen. Um, so that's where my zero zero will be. And then I will just use the same type of tool path as I did before. So I would go in and I would uh, go ahead here and um, do my facing first. So select the facing operation. I'll go into my tool library. I'll select that 50 millimeter face mill we used in the first uh, second video. Again, I don't have to select any geometry because it knows uh, the boundary. And that will be my, my first uh, setup. Then I would go in and just like the first one, select the, the, the contour to remove that remaining material we could not remove before. 
So I'll go in and select my 60, uh, 16 millimeters in here. Feeds and speeds and flooding is still around to your tool manufacturer. And then I can select the bottom edge again. Remember, we put that chamfer in there. And again, the height, I will do the same thing as I did before. I would select the, the stock bottom or the, the model bottom. Doesn't really matter at this point. And I would add a little bit of, of offset to it so I don't machine into my to my jaw. And that would do to bring that up. So we have two different operations, two different programs. Now, you could verify them all here. If we select the stock setup uh, that we just created and the other stock setup and did a quick simulation, we will see that um, we can actually uh, get, we will see that we get the different uh, machining. So here we get the facing of the first one and we see how we have like that stock left. And that's what we're going to do with this setup number five. Um, and uh, then we will see that when we come here, it's not going to face off. Also notice when we're going through here that the software is actually showing us where it is over in the feature tree, which is really, really nice too. So now it's going to come down to the last operation, right? Here we see how it faces it off. And now it's going to come down and clean off the last area. So now we actually machine top and bottom here. Okay. So we've got two two different programs um, right in here and they are now ready to to be machined out at the part so again to post these two programs out would be fairly easy if we want to program post out the first program select the setup and go up to the post process now um, i'm going to leave the house still the same as i did in my previous video now i might call this 7501 because this is program number one i'm now having multiple programs so I could post that out and you will see that this program definitely now is long, right? So if I just go back out to the desktop where I just saved it as 7501, there it is. You will see that by posting all these different operations, this program got really long. And this is one of the reasons that I like to maybe break it up if you are new, because it kind of like, it doesn't become, you know, try to find something inside of this can be, can be really hard. Um, and then we, of course, have our second setup, but it's really just the facing and, and going around it. Theoretically, you wouldn't have to post this out the second operation. We could actually uh, take the first operation and reuse those, except we picked up differently, remember? So if we go in here now, we will just post that out as the second program. So I would call it 7502 as my second program. And that would only have uh, those few... Uh, lines of codes because it's really just going around.